I absolutely love old couches and I've been fascinated by this upholstery print for years. I'm Michelle, this is my Romantic Tangle and let's go thrifting. I've seen this same upholstery dozens and dozens of times, but I've never seen it on a couch set in quite this style. And it is really easy to imagine that there might have been something like this in our hundred year old farmhouse once upon a time. I think it'd look pretty darn cool in our living room right now. And it's a good thing we just replaced our couches because otherwise I might be tempted to call my husband and try to talk him into it. I've said before that I might get some Jim Beam decanters to use for mantelscapes, and this chipmunk is exactly the sort of thing I have in mind. Isn't that just cute and intriguing? In the store, I was totally convinced that these weren't uranium glass. I'm still sure they weren't, otherwise they wouldn't have been there, but now I'm almost second guessing myself. And here's today's big mystery item of the day. What do they think that someone is going to do with half a meat grinder? I am just absolutely baffled by this thing. At least it was cheap. The salt and pepper shakers caught my interest. These little guys were actually plastic and not nearly as nice to the touch as they looked. I like those apples now that I'm noticing them. If you were going to donate salt and pepper shakers, wouldn't you empty out the contents first? I'm always looking for echo spatulas in good condition, but I did not have the patience to pick through all of this. I do see that super common corningware design now. And if I ever break my microwave turntable, I know where I'm going to look for a replacement. That's one of those things that has no value unless you break yours and need one. This Betty G Cook Cooker Fryer had neat graphics and I looked online when I got home, saw a bunch of them for sale as vintage, but also saw a page listing it on the QVC website. So I don't know if this is new or old. It doesn't matter because we do our deep frying in a big cast iron skillet. Whatever its age, it's definitely more visually appealing than any of the other appliances sitting here. I like these cutting boards. That's decorative painting is really obsessing me right now. More milk glass, and this is hobnail. I don't love the shape of it. It reminds me of the urns by the graveside that you put flowers in. Maybe I'm just morbid. Take a look at that little red vase in the back. That's going to be important later. This is St. Vinny's, and they have a cabinet where they keep the expensive stuff. That iron is different than anything else in my collection. And I'm wondering what is special about these utensils that they are locked up. And I think they were $7.50 a piece. There has to be a reason behind that. And do Pepsi collectors really want these beat up old cans for 15 bucks? It just boggles my mind a little bit, but we always look in the case because sometimes there is something. I love this Chase Lounge. I love the idea of it. I currently have a twin bed up in my sewing room and something like this would take so much less space and still be a place to lay down and daydream about future projects. They had this massive train set, and I think they wanted $250 for it, which, who knows, I'm not questioning that whatever is in these boxes originally cost a lot of money, but for someone to come buy them without knowing what they're getting, that's one of the thrift store things that always puzzles me a bit. And the note on top of this box is just sad. Complete train set with large green track. Didn't know if you'd want it or not. Maybe they should have taken off the note before donating it. This green afghan has me imagining when I was a little kid and playing with those plastic animals, farm animals. And look at this. I did not scream in the thrift store. I definitely did catch my breath and I'm sure my heartbeat definitely sped up a bit because... It's a shopping cart full of cross-stitch stuff, guys. And 
I have not found any cross stitching stuff at this store in months. It is always either feast or famine. There are no words for it. There was a lot of stamped cross stitch pillowcases and a dresser scarf and quilt blocks. And I didn't buy any of those just because the ones I got at Hobby Lobby over the past couple years, I haven't touched yet. I plan on doing them. I just don't know when I plan on doing them. I, I, I almost don't know what to say. Look at the felt ornaments there. I flipped past them, then went to, especially those. I wanted another look at those. Now, I never took my hands off that cart, but when I flipped back to look for them, I could not find them to save my life. I don't know how to explain it. And seriously, there was so much fun stuff in this cart that it was overwhelming in the best possible way. Once in a blue moon, you will stumble across finds like this. And I'm always shocked when it happens and happy when it happens. I hope that whoever got there after me had a great appreciation of stamped cross stitch and what I left in the basket because I left most of it. I was very, very restrained, which you'll see in a few minutes. There was a lot of older little pieces of Ada and I got a lot of the lighter colors because I figure for dyeing experiments, I can make those bluer or greener or I don't know what. Those little packages the green one and the blue one there, those are three six by six inch pieces, which I'm really glad I noticed the measurements on the front before I carried those up to the cash register because if I'd gotten them home, I would have been very disappointed. It just went on and on and on. And there was a big bag of fiber fill in there, which took up a whole lot of space. So it's not literally a shopping cart full of cross stitch. And there was also some other stuff in there. But it was more than cross stitch than I had seen in one place in a very long time, especially at a thrift store. I don't know if I've ever seen this much at one place at one time in a thrift store. There was a wall. That's a wall inspirational decal. There was a lot of other stuff in there. But most of it was stitching related. And if it looks like I was flipping through the same stuff over and over, I kind of was. I would love to do a project like that. And in hindsight, there were a couple of those, so probably enough to make a quilt and maybe something I should have paid a little more attention to at the time, but in the moment, you're not always thinking long-term. What I should have done was brought over another cart and maybe sorted through things one by one to make sure I saw what was actually in there. There were some more of those vintage creative circle kits like the ones I found at Safe Haven months ago. It just makes you wonder how this stuff got there. Some of it is obviously very vintage. And then some of it might be newer. We talk about being giddy from the fumes of the floss and the fabric. And I think that is a real phenomenon. You will not convince me otherwise. Let me know, do you see anything in here that you would have picked up for yourself? Most of the stamped pieces I think were $1.99. I didn't look at the prices on the Creative Circle kits because I knew those wouldn't be coming back home with me. So and there were a lot of quilting patterns in the bottom and that was about the point where I stopped digging. This is the bottom of my shopping cart and what I bought. Like I said, I'm going to use the 
lighter colors to experiment with some dyeing. The tube did turn out to be a piece that had been cut down to much smaller than I expected, but for the $4 and change I spent on everything, I'm not begrudging that at all. I have been wanting to try Easy Count for absolutely ever. And to find it at the thrift store, I think it was $1.99, which is probably one of the most expensive things that I bought, but it is well worth it to me. I'm just so tickled that we found that and it couldn't come at a better time. I like this napkin holder. The details of the roses are just nifty. For $3.99, it was priced just high enough not to tempt me too much. More old Jim Beam models. These weren't at all tempting because great moments in the history of sport is just not at all up my alley. Here's another little milk glass vase. I am spotting these all over the place now, and I don't know if there are more than there were a few months ago or if they are just suddenly on my radar, so I am spotting them where I would have walked by them to begin with with. It's an interesting phenomenon. Those cut glass cups are still there, still reminding me of grandma, and I've got to call my mom to see if she knows what happened to grandma's set. Someone had donated a whole ton of Norman Rockwell. This says it doesn't have any calendar pieces included, but it gives you no clue at all what is in all of that styrofoam taped to the back. So I don't know what the expectation of the person who packaged and priced this was. Love the little snowshoe. It was real wood. It was real sinew. It was absolutely the most charming, adorable thing. And I'm almost glad it didn't have a price tag because I was so seriously tempted and I already have a full-size snowshoe to decorate my mantle with, so I'm not sure I need a little one, too. I think the wedding cake candle was probably newer. The turtle next to it, though, he is vintage and he is cute. And right after I put him down, my daughter came along behind me and picked him up to take a look. More Nor Norman Rockwell. This store always has lots and lots of collector's plates, but today it seemed like they had extra. And like I said, I think with the calendar and some of the other stuff I saw, somebody's collection wound up here. That one's not. Obviously Norman Rockwell. I don't know why I am so fascinated by those images. I've talked about them more than once. And I'll keep looking at them and being intrigued by them and enjoying them when I see them. And sooner or later, I'm going to cave and buy one. I'm waiting for estate sale prices. This globe so definitely did not belong with that base it was sitting on. I was kind of relieved to see that they were not attached and were not a package deal. There is some reason I wanted an old globe and I could not in the store remember what the plan was, and there was no price. Lots of unpriced things today. I love this birdhouse. It is the prettiest shade of blue, and the birds and the pine cone and just everything about it made me want it. I don't know what I'd do with it, I love the way the Goodwills in my area always have things divided up by color like this. Let me know, do your stores do it? This piece, my camera did not pick up the detail. It is something, it just screams, I am vintage and I am fragile and I am beautiful. And I love things like that. And I wish my camera had picked, caught the detail. Look at the vase. That is identical to the white milk glass vase that I bought a couple of weeks ago. And if you remember the vase I told you to pay attention to two stores before this one, it was the, another little hobnail vase and I did not notice it at all 
until I was home and uploading the videos. Another trivet, but I have got plenty of those. I suppose someday I could stitch enough stuff to fill them all up, and in that case, I'll come looking for more. If I wasn't so darn cheap, I would have loved to have these for my kitchen. That, how, what would you call the texture of that glass? Whatever it is, it really appeals to me. And this owl is our craziest find of the day. The only clue that he is an owl is the fact that he was sitting in a tree. As my daughter said, somebody obviously worked really, really hard on that piece. And I hope that it finds someone who will appreciate it. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. Thank you so much for watching.